Well, hello, welcome to the channel. My name's Johnny, and you're watching Hillbilly Modeling. And this is our next project. This is the M31 US Tank Recovery Vehicle by, is it TACOM or TACOM? I think it's TACOM. <laughs> so, uh, TACOM's known for uh, having really good detail uh, in their moldings, and we're gonna have a look at what's in this kit. Uh, first look around the box on this one side right here. We have two different versions, a 1944 version and a 43 version uh, where it was used in the desert. And uh, on the end, we have the same as on the box top. And this is kit number 2088. And on this side, uh, we do have uh, the sprues that are in the kit along with some photo etch. Uh, also, it comes with uh, a, a metal tow cable, and that would be really nice. I think it's a tow cable. It might be a cable for the crane uh, or a boom assembly. Uh, we'll take a look and see what that's all about. And there's nothing on the bottom of the box. So, let's go ahead and jump down uh, on the bench here and take a look. So, if we can get this box open. There we go. Now, this is how it comes packed. We haven't opened anything. And it looks like uh, all of our sprues, here's our hull and turret, turret base. Uh, so all of this is, as you can see, they have wrapped each different type of sprue separately. And it is a lot of sprues. This is a thick box. And then we get down to photo etch, the cable, decals, and our instructions too. So let's open all these up and see what there is to look at. Alright, so first up, we're going to start looking at some of these parts. We'll start off with our uh, bathtub style hull. And as you can see on the side here, uh, we've got a lot of nice bolt and rivet detail very nice the other side is the same also includes this rib which you can see right up underneath the sponsor in there uh, a lot of these uh, m3 kits from other manufacturers don't include that so that's a nice detail there and then on the bottom of the hull you can see we've got all this bracket detail bolt and rivet detail I think this has something to do with the winch that was installed in this vehicle. And we also have these nicely formed uh, stiffeners. These are hole stiffeners um, to keep the hole from flexing. Uh, so that's a nice detail. A lot of kits leave that out too. So very nice. And I'll give you a closer look there at those details. Very, very nice. Next up is the turret. Now, as you can see, I hope you can see, there is, if I can get the light just right, the casting number in there. So that's nice. And it does seem to be a little spot right there that we'll have to take care of. Uh, something about TACOM's uh, molding process, you'll see those every now and then. But you can see here the type of screw detail and on the cupola ring there, very nice. And also this really nice texturing for this cast turret, you can see that so that's really, really nice. So you you won't have to go and, and do all that texturing and mixing up putties and stuff uh, with this kit. So they've, they've taken and put that on for us. So that's very nice. So next we have sprue A. And there are two of these. Get that one out of the way. I like how uh, TACOM has done this with the, uh, the sprue identifier uh, punched through like that. That way you can easily pick it out. And we'll just start around. So these are for the 
the uh, bogies for our road wheels. That's the back side of them that we're looking at there. And we got some swing arms. All that detail there. And you can see how nice and deep and crisp all this detail is here on these road wheels. So with the M3, these weren't the solid type road wheels. These are the ones that are cast with uh, all these flash cutouts on them. And they look really good. And we have our idler. Very nice. This is the back side of our sprockets. And these are the support rollers here. And these are really nice. And then we also have our volute springs. And I do like how they've done the attachments of the sprue gates there. You see how they have done that? that that'll be really easy to trim off and clean up. So that's nice. And there are other little bits and pieces there. We've got uh, some shackles and brackets. So we'll flip this over so we can take a good look at our sprockets. And as you can see there, very nice early style. We even have our nut uh, lug nut detail there, very nice. This is our final drive cover. And these are the plates, I think. These are the hull plates uh, for each one of the bogies. They've got the bolt detail on them. And here we got fuel caps. Very nicely done. <clears throat> And this is the other side of the bogies. Now there are two different type of bogies in here, so I'm not sure which ones we're going to use for the M31. We'll have to look at the instructions to see. But I don't know if you can see it or not, but there is actually some casting numbers right on the part. Very nice. So there are two of those sprues. And next up is sprue B. There are two of these as well. And as you can see, TACOM has given us our punched out B. I really like that. <laughs> now, these bogey arms are different than the ones that are on the A sprue. These might be the ones just for the M31. More, more than likely they are. And these are the updated manufacturing of the uh, the bogies themselves. So we have two of these sprues. Next sprue is sprue D. And this looks like our rear engine deck, the top of the fighting compartment, and we have that really nice uh, casting number in right there. And it appears to be release compound if you can see it there see that shiny stuff there it will rub off so these sprues will need to be washed for sure and we have some uh, fender detail nice bolt detail really nice stuff this goes around the rear of the uh, uh, fighting compartment and I think these have to be bent. We'll have to look at the instructions to find out, but I think so. Here we have a tripod with the uh, uh, canvas cover on it, I think. Yeah. Very nice detail on that. That would be for probably the 30 caliber machine gun. These are our final drive covers, and they too have casting numbers in them. I can get it just right there so you can see it. Okay. These look really, really good. These are probably spare track. Looks like tracks, yes. Not much on the back side here. It does have a tow cable. Look at that. Very nicely made. Not like the, the old Tamiya cables that are 
so horrendous. This is this is a really really nice looking cable. Okay, so that's sprue D. Next we have sprue E. So we have some more upper hull panels here. And this is the uh, cast section that goes around where the 75 millimeter gun would go in the hull, the upper hull, I should say. Here's our breast plate. And these are the split rings where the this uh, breast plate right here was in three sections. So these are the the bolt together flanges for those. They've got that real, real nice detail there. Front armor plate, very nice. It's just all that little detail there in the bolts. So nice, really nice. So this uh, vehicle had a dummy 75 millimeter cannon. It didn't have any real armament, uh, so they just had, <laughs> had dummy uh, guns on them. Now this piece right here that you see right there, it has these little cutouts here. This is used, uh, this is a track jig so that we get the right, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, the uh, track droop or sag where it comes off the front drive sprocket and it'll sag down uh, across the top of the uh, support rollers. So it's nice that they've included that so that we can get that profile correct. So that's that's nice. And we have other little parts there. I think that's the horn right there maybe. Just kind of guessing on some of this. Antenna mounts. On the back side, some of it has deep. Now, these are the rear engine access doors. Very nice. So that's uh, sprue E. Next up is sprue H. So this is all the back side of this. So not, not a lot there. Um... Nice big wrench. We'll flip it over here and we can see all of our nice uh, bolt and rivet detail that's on there. So they've just done an amazing job with all of this. <laughs> I do hope all these parts fit together uh, as well as they look. They just look so well. Look at that. Really nice details. Even right down to the diamond plate that's on this. Very nice, very nice. Not many parts on here, so that's H. Next up is H2. Lots and lots of panels. Now these are uh, probably the toolboxes that are on the back of the engine deck. I would say that's what those are. Uh, spare track, rear brackets, and you can just see uh, all this wonderful detail. Again, support rollers. Really nice detail there. So flipping it over. Not much on there, but you can see where they've put the... They've actually molded in those details there on those support rollers. I'm really impressed with those support rollers. <laughs> uh, very nice. More road wheels. These are probably the spare road wheels. Yeah. They have the bolt where it's bolted to the exterior of the vehicle molded in. Nice detail on that. Very nice. So that's sprue H2. So now this is J, and there's not a whole lot here to look at. Uh, this is just the uh, underside of the turret, and also I think the uh, crane mounts there, maybe. 
or part of the winch, something. But nice molding here on that window visor. Very nice. Next up we have J2, and I think this is where we're starting to get into the crane assembly that will go onto the turret. These are our spare um, sprockets, and we have our supports for our crane. Nice looking stuff. We have the commander's hatch. And this would be the plate that replaces the mantlet on the turret itself. Very nice. And we have uh, these are sheaves for the boom. Very nicely molded in. And these little U shaped pieces will be clipped off. That's not actually part of the part. Is part of the sprue. So I like how they've done that though. Should be fairly easy to clean up. And the back side, we do have detail inside the boom there. You can see the nice bolt pattern areas there on our sprockets. Very nice. Very impressive the bolt pattern up here in these knuckles for our boom very well done all right so that is J2 our next sprue is the L sprue and these are all of our tracks now this is the only track option that comes in the kit and these are the link and length sections and so we have the top and bottom sections there and if I can get in really close here you can actually see how those end connectors are really really nice detailed there very nice and we'll flip it around and we can see all of our guide horns very nicely molded. Look how nice those are. A beautiful track. Very minimal on the um, uh, ejector pins. Most of them are proud. There's one right here I see that is recessed. But the greatest majority of them are all seem to be proud. Or very very shallow see there those are a little shallow but most of them are proud which means they'll be really easy to clean up really easy to clean up so we won't be spending too much time fixing all of these track pads <laughs> uh, nice tracks okay so that's sprue L here is sprue T, and it looks like they are just the headlight lenses. And it's all's on it, them two parts. Set that aside. And we do have our photo etch. Get this open for us here. I should have took it out of the bag before now, but here we go. And as you can see, focusing on that grill, Really nice detail there on that grill. They did a fantastic job on that. And then we have uh, parts two, three, and nine. Those are the brackets that'll go around the headlights there. Very nice. And then we have these little eyelets that we see here along all these long eyelet bolts. I think those are for securing the uh, bottoms that are on the uh, air cleaners. So that ought to be a lot of fun putting those on. Some of this other stuff I really don't know what it is. <laughs> so we'll find out when we go to build, won't we? 
and those are really really teeny tiny parts there so set that aside now we do have this really nice cable very finely done we won't have to make any cable for this kit as you can see it really nice and I think this is the uh, cable stays for our boom or crane assembly so that should look really good next up is the decals or decals if you prefer and we have all these different ones here so we have to decide uh, what version we want to build but just looking at them they seem to be well lined up what a lot of modelers call being in register and they're not too thick as you can see there I get the light to play along them you can see that they are not real thick like we're used to with uh, Tamiya decals so we have to be careful when we go to put these on because the thinner the decal the more apt it is to fold up on itself so we want to be really careful when we go to uh, slide these decals off. Really nice decals though. And these are Tacom decals. We'll set those aside. So next up we will quickly go through this little booklet right here and it is a booklet set of instructions. This is the M31 US tank recovery vehicle. We have a nice graphic here of the vehicle side profile and we have a little bit of history at the bottom and it says 3.02.2088 2088 is definitely the kit number I don't know what the 0302 is but uh, anyway open it up uh, read before assembly and you should always do that They have the suggested colors, as you can see here. Um, and these are uh, Mig Jimenez. So, next we got applying decals, good instructions there. Removing your PE. And then, of course, we have our uh, sprue map. And it tells us that we have 2A sprues, etc., etc., etc. And we've done looked at all this, so we're not going to spend a lot of time on that. We'll flip it over. And you can po uh, pause your video at any time. Um, just want to draw your attention to certain things in these instructions. Uh, pay special close attention to where it's going to tell us to drill holes. Okay? Need to make holes one millimeter there. 1.2 millimeter here so that's the kind of the key there to success <laughs> don't forget to do these things 0.8 there but anyway we have our lower hole assembly and there is these rollers here that have something to do with our main winch they get placed in the bottom of the hole and then the rest of it is pretty much assembly of your standard M3 slash M4 type suspension. And they will tell you certain things like right here where you have to cut a rivet out for some reason or a bolt. So you need to pay attention to those things. I think they're telling us to move it. Cut it off and move it to the arm or something I don't know we'll have to go into that in depth so that's the reason why you need to really study uh, all of your uh, instructions and here you can see the uh, jig being used for the top run of the track that way we get the appropriate sag as you can see there if I didn't fold the <laughs> fold the instructions up where you can't see it but there it is uh, it's got a little bit of sag there and then it goes across the top of the support rollers so 
and then very very simply the build up of the upper hull pretty much what you would expect doesn't seem to be any real surprises other than we have to continually drill holes everywhere but that's okay we have our new uh, to me uh, handy drill we can <laughs> we can drill holes that's not a problem uh, interesting fact is that this right here is the dummy 75 millimeter gun this also opens up and there's toolboxes that's supposed to be inside there so or so I read somewhere I didn't see it in person so I don't know and on to the rest of the assembly these are the PE uh, light guards so very very nice lots of parts and I guess these are spare support rollers that are mounted on the rear of the vehicle carrying lots of spare parts for repairs these are the air cleaners that I talked about before with the little bitty PE eyelet bolts yeah that's what those are for very nice and now we're getting into the turret and the crane assembly really has quite a few parts to that crane very interesting so it looks like they have a tow bar that's mounted on the side of the crane as well as the tow bar that's on the rear of the vehicle and these are the jacks that hold the, the uh, crane boom into place. And you can see here they can be in either the stowed position or you can have them in the deployed position. Just remember that you're looking at it uh, with the, with the uh, bottom of the crane upside down. So it doesn't say that, but that's really how it is. <laughs> because <laughs> here we have it flipped back over all right so very nice so this is option what are we talking about I don't know I'm gonna have to read through these so you can have it displayed with the crane facing towards the rear of the vehicle which would be travel mode and they had a fake 75 and a fake 37 millimeter gun uh, to make it look like a tank so that it looked like it had defenses which in reality it did not um, so you can also uh, put the turret on with it facing forward with the supports or you can have it with the supports on the ground as well you can see there there's actually feet for it where it can set on the ground in the forward position and then this is with the crane to the rear with the jacks in the, in the locked stow position so lots of options there now it comes down to let's see one two three four five we'll just look at them really quick here there are five different versions that we can paint up I kind of like that one right there myself. That's July 1943, Operation Husky. And very nice. Last two is just green. I think I like something with a little bit more color. It's got a browns on it. And this here is just green and black or olive and black very interesting so when this kit came out it was part of a three kit release they had the M3 Grant and the M3 Lee and then the M31 which is the kit that we're building all of it was released in 2017 
There we go, 2017, kit 2088. And that is a front profile picture of our instructions. And that's what's in the box. So I hope you enjoyed our little in-box look at the uh, M31 U.S. tank recovery vehicle model by Tacom in uh, 135th scale. Uh, looks to be a pretty interesting vehicle. And uh, I really enjoy uh, the support equipment uh, for the tanks and military units. So this should be a lot of fun to build up. And... Uh, yeah, so next thing we need to do is uh, get to work on this kit. So I hope you stick with me through the build series. It should be a lot of fun. So special thanks to all my subscribers. It's because of you guys that I keep making these videos, and I hope that you enjoyed this one. If you're new to the channel and you're not a subscriber, I hope today I earned your subscription, and uh, look forward to more videos to come. So until next time, guys, stay safe.